Hi, this is Gil Robles. I'm back again with another video. I am doing this drawing of my son from a, a recent photograph that I took of him. In, uh, and I'm doing this in Leonardo. I wanted to do this video basically because I wanted to um, explain how I try to go about getting the pencil tool in, in Leonardo or any, any digital software really to, to look more like a pencil drawing. Um, and Leonardo already has a great, great pencil. There, there are a lot of, um, there's a lot of software with, with, with uh, a, a great pencil brush. But I wanted to, to, to push it a little bit further. There's a, a tech, technique that I was taught in high school um, in using watercolor and also using uh, um, charcoal that I had bought into uh, my approach here as far as uh, um, uh, doing, doing these drawings digitally. So, which is what I'm doing now. Um, I, again, uh, the, the, it already has a great, great pencil from, uh, I, I hope that you can tell from the way I'm using it right now is that it, it works pretty good. It, it mimics a pencil very, very well. And a lot of software does that. But I wanted to push it, especially when I'm um, using values, um, uh, you know, just the, the gray tones, to push it more into um, into the look of a, a, a final pencil drawing um, more more smoothly and, and more convincingly. And I, I think that this way that I'm doing it helps out a lot. So I'm going to demonstrate it. I'm going to show in just a little bit. But before I go on ahead I just just briefly I just want to mention that underneath uh, this video you'll see like uh, some t-shirts and stuff like that as far as merchandise that I uh, that helps me as far as um, trying to do as much as I can with these videos and um, so it's just cool stuff uh, um, one of the things that I really like is the idea of putting uh, famous artist quotes on a t-shirt you calling it art tees and um, quotes by uh, artists like Hokusai, uh, Sargent, Michelangelo, so forth, Degas, and, uh, um, which I thought was really cool. And, uh, you know, just a, a neat thing to have, especially when you're in art school, you know, you, you have these inspirational quotes that you can share with your, with your fellow art students and also to inspire you. But anyway, that's it. I won't say any more about that. Um, please give a look. Um, the rest is really me concentrating on uh, this drawing that I'm doing. And um, right now, I'm, I'm just approaching it the way I normally do a drawing. I'm just trying to set everything up, make sure everything is, is uh, um, measured and um, placed correctly and so forth. Um, now, uh, what you might call it, I, there, there's no... All those uh, um, different methods of drawing, as far as uh, um, that, that you see a lot of videos online, which are, are great. The Loomis method, uh, um, the uh, uh, what you might call it, Riley rhythms, and, and so forth. Now, I, I'm not necessarily using any of that, um, but there there are like a lot of ways to get to Grandma's house. And in terms of there are a lot of ways to 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 draw and to um, Put down what you see and when I first started drawing I, w I wasn't even aware of Andrew Loomis or, or, or the Riley method or anything like that um, and when I first took classes and was drawing from the model and there were a lot of artists before them like Menzel or you know Degas or, or, or you know you can name any number of artists who didn't particularly use who didn't use those methods because they weren't invented. Uh, Loomis wasn't around, neither was Riley. But um, not, that's not to say that these methods are, are, are in any way not good. They, they're great. Um, but they're based on things that, that you know, that, uh, that these guys had learned from people before them. And in examining the works of other artists and so forth, also working from life, you know, so in in that sense, um, you know, I there, like what I'm saying. There are a lot of ways to get to Grandma's house. I mean, there, you can study 
um, the, the works of other artists as well and you're going to arrive at something similar because they're all looking for the same thing and that's just to say that um, after some time of really looking into those things looking into because I felt like I had missed something I had gone back to um, the way that I see things and trying to analyze shapes and, and so forth because it is really what I'm comfortable with um, uh, and in terms of um, my way of viewing things it's not it's not really that far off or that different because again there you know it, it's I've been taught from the point of view of looking for the same things um, and and uh, um, I just went back to it because it, it just seemed more natural to me. So, I, I mean, even though um, you might see some similar things, because, uh, again, the measurements are, you know, the way you go about things are, are, are similar. Um, but it's I'm not exactly using Riley rhythms or, or just uh, uh, um, laying things out the way Loomis would. Um, nothing wrong with it. I think that they're, they're both great methods. But... Let me explain what I'm doing here. What I did was I, I opened up a layer after I finished the pencil drawing and I put down a, a, a middle value and that's a, um, the, the, the gray that I'm working into now. And then um, but and then after that I put down a darker value, just slightly darker. Now I, I play around with the opacity of the layers and so forth so that um, I, I don't overdo it as far as the darks are concerned. I'm saving both my darkest darks and my lightest lights for the end but what I do is I I, I, um, I do those layers then I, I, I uh, merge those layers then I go back into it with which is what I'm doing now with the eraser and then what I do with the eraser tool is that I make sure that um, it's I lower the opacity on the tool itself so it's not erasing everything at once but it's it's uh, um, it's racing just about as much as as, as I, I need. I, again, not trying to get to my lightest light. And uh, if I do, it's all right. Nothing has to be exacting at this point, except the big shapes. I'm trying to get to to make sure that the big shapes are are are, are working. Uh, on the silhouette of the um, of the profile is working, so that I can work back into it. Now, what I do after I finish those layers and going over the eraser and stuff like going over it with the eraser is I go back and I open up another layer. I lower the opacity and I also play with the opacity on the pencil tool and then go back into it and start breaking up those shapes and refining those areas. And um, and then I'll go back into it again with the pencil tool. And I keep doing this and doing this. Uh, you know, um, I, I refine the layer as much as I can, or as I get as far as I can in that layer. Then I, I think that okay, I need to open up another layer and then go back into this a little bit more, and and I and then uh, I repeat, and I and then I, I I merge the layer. I I I might lower that layer again, to lower the opacity of that layer again. And then open up another layer and uh, um, again um, repeat, merge, maybe lower the opacity a little bit less, but still lower it. And then repeat, uh, uh, open up another layer, lower that opacity. And I just keep on doing this so that I'm working in, in, in layers that um, uh, um, going back and forth with the pencil and the eraser tool. And... Uh, um, See, I, I lowered the layer now, and I, I choose a gray, not a dark, not, not, it's a dark gray, but not all the way black, and I go back into the drawing. I hope this is not confusing, I, I, I um, but what I, what I try to do is, again, let me see if I can explain this, uh, is work on a layer to, to where I feel that I, I uh, um, you know, I, I don't want to work on that layer anymore. I felt like it would be more helpful to open up another layer and then um, uh, uh, continue to work on the drawing. When I'm done with that layer, I, I, I merge it and then I, I, I do the same again 
up until I come to a finish. This it it really is not as much work as it seems, um, but it what it what it does is if you if you look at it, it helps me to arrive at a cleaner image. It helps me also to arrive at an image where it's easier to um, to blend these values together to pick out the ones that I want a more 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 um, harder edges and pick out the ones where I you know and be able to go back into working the softer edges with either uh, the pencil at a lower opacity or the eraser tool and so uh, you see I'm, I'm lowering the opacity on these layers and going back into it and so it's not all the way dark and it allows me to work back into it in a way that I can I can make subtle changes and and uh, um, and controlling the opacity in the layer helps me to do that so when I merge it with the one below um, it, it also helps me to work on it as one image I'm, I'm coming into um, digital art from a traditional artist background a traditional artist point of view so I'm, I'm trying to work these things out as if um, I was working traditionally I, that's why you don't see me do a lot of uh, uh, what you might call it uh, of uh, zooming in and zooming out I do it at times uh, mostly when I'm, I'm working on, on an illustration or something like that but when I'm working on something for myself and I'm just sketching I don't do a lot of zooming in and zooming out. Um, I do uh, use the lasso tool from from time to time, but again, not too much because it's not it's not something that that I force myself to do. Like I said, no, I'm I'm approach it as a as as a traditional. It's just something that I'm used to doing. You know, I'm 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 treating this as if I'm working on a sheet of paper, and I can't zoom in on a sheet of paper other than to put my face closer to the paper. Um, so, you know, I, I don't, I don't use magnifying glasses or anything like that. So I'm, I'm really just drawing. I, I don't, I, I, I like, one of the reasons why I like certain software like Leonardo is that I'm not, I'm not caught up in the technical part of it. I, I'd rather have brushes that I don't have to, um, that I don't have to, um, uh, make too many tweaks to and be able to use it that way so that uh, um, it, it's straightforward drawing you know I like relying on my ability to draw my ability to draw rather than on filters and so forth and you know not that I don't use them from time to time especially like I said when I'm doing illustration work but when I'm doing these things that are just for myself I just want to draw I just want to draw. I just want to draw as if I was uh, drawing in a classroom, you know, with the model before me, or just drawing in my sketch pad, and and that that's all I want to do. I don't want to get uh, um, too much on 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 uh, um, the technical. Too too. Much, I don't want to get to thinking too much about technical things. It's just me, the pencil, and the paper, and whatever I have before me. So. Um, so that's why I, I draw the way that I do, and I kind of want to look for these results where the drawing doesn't look like a digital drawing, but it looks like an actual pencil or a charcoal drawing, which is what I am shooting for here. So so far, um, again, just just doing what what I what I do with the layers, also changing the opacity, of course, on. The tool itself and changing the, the the value the grays and one of the dangers is that I, I try to keep it close I try not to uh, um, to put down too many values um, so I'm, I'm trying to, to, to you know keep it to maybe the minimum of five values if I can keep it to there so that it doesn't get too confusing and also, you know what, I, 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 I want to keep, if I keep it with uh, um, those few values, I'm really only working on um, a few major shapes. I'm not trying to break it down. See, because I, I started with the big shape first. 
And then from that big shape, I started to get, uh, work on smaller and smaller and smaller shapes as far as refinement is concerned. So if you go back to the beginning of the drawing, there were only two values to begin with, apart from the outline of the drawing. So as I go, as I continue to work into it, I refine what I had down, what I had put down first. Like I said, as long as I get my big sheet, because if you see the drawing, there isn't that big of a difference between the, the shapes that you see now and the shapes that I started with at the beginning in terms of uh, proportion and so forth, because I made sure that those were in the right places before I started to fill it in with the values. That way that um, um, the rest of my drawing, um, I wasn't concerned about the proportions and stuff. I was more concerned about just refining what I had put down initially. Now, eventually what I do is I'll merge all the layers together so it's just one drawing. I'll get rid of the drawing where, I, the, the layer rather, where I have the photo. But already at this point, it's not finished yet. I haven't got my darkest areas in yet or my lightest areas in yet. And it's already looking like a pencil drawing. It's a, looking like a pencil drawing where I might have used a, a, a stomp to uh, um, rub in the you know rub in the drawings and and spread out the the the, the gray the gray values or tones um so it, it's already having the desired effect as far as this method is concerned and it's a lot more to me it's a lot more effective than just um you know just using the pencil tool alone uh the 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 tools that i use to to fill in the the grays was I, I outlined it with the marker brush with the gray value and then I went back into it I, I, once I did the outline I went back into that outline with the with the bucket tool and I, I, I poured in the gray value that, that you see then I went back into it again in the second layer with the marker brush again to add the, the slightly darker values and then after that, it was all pencil and um, using the pencil tool and the uh, eraser tool. And again, changing, working with the opacity in the layer and working with the opacity in the tools itself to, uh, to work on this drawing. But that's it. That's basically the method that I use. Um, like I said, uh, watercolorists use this method. I was taught this. And when I was in high school, I went to high school of art and design, and we used plate finished Bristol board, and we did watercolor washes, and then we would lift up the light areas with uh, with uh, the brush loaded with water, and uh, and uh, maybe a little uh, um, a little cloth, not cloth, uh, which a paper towel, um, and also um, might use a, a sheet of paper where we laid down uh, charcoal. A one charcoal tone in the background and lift up with the eraser and use the charcoal to, for, for the darker areas. So that's pretty much how I arrived at using this. I just transferred that, what I learned there to uh, the way I use the digital tools and um, so I'm just using a similar method. So this drawing is just about finished and um, if you followed me this far I hope you like the video. You know the drill. If you if you like the video, uh, hit the like button. If uh, you you have any comments or any questions, please leave them. I, I, I would love to see them and uh, respond back. As well as if you want to continue to support this uh, channel, uh, again there's that merch down below, or you can join me on my Patreon page. I will also leave that link below. Here now is the finished drawing. Um, and you know, let me know if you agree that this look more like a pencil drawing or or more like a digital drawing, or you you know you you can't really tell the difference or or just what. Let me know what your opinion is. I, I'd love to hear it. Um, so until my next video, I will see you soon. Bye bye.